Hi, my name is Craig Weish. I'm with Visible Assets. And what we're going to demonstrate here today are a few different antenna designs. I have two Ruby antennas here on the table in front of me. Uh, here is something we call a Ranger uh, antenna. It's the sort of thing that's built into shelving uh, and so on uh, in order to communicate with Ruby tags. And then here we have a new antenna design, uh, a rod antenna. It's a ferrite antenna. And it has some different performance characteristics. So we're going to take a look at the performance of these two types of antennas with a few different kinds of Ruby tags. So let's take a closer look at the performance of these different types of Ruby antennas. With this laptop, I'm able to switch between the antennas. So I'm going to start with the Ranger antenna. And as I start the antenna, you hear that it's starting to read a Ruby tag. In this case, it's set to read a ID tag that I have in my wallet. So each of those dinging sounds that you hear in the background is a successful read from the antenna to the tag. As with other Ruby antennas, this antenna is generating a volumetric field around the antenna. And I'm going to step back a little bit here and we'll see what sort of range we're getting. I'm back around 10, 12 feet and still getting pretty reliable reads from that antenna. So now let's take a look at the same tag, but using the Ruby rod antenna. So as I start up the antenna, you hear the dinging sound, successful read. Again, volumetric area around the antenna. As I come away, notice we're getting about the same range, about the same 10, 12 feet with this tag, reading from the Ruby rod. So one of the differences between these two antennas is the degree to which they can be detuned by the presence of metal uh, in the environment. Uh, any Ruby antenna can be tuned to go into a metal environment. For example, the Ranger antenna, we use it in steel shelves and so on. Uh, but let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and start up the Ranger antenna again. You're going to hear it reading this tag. And I come back here and I'm getting that 10, 12 feet of range that we saw earlier. Now I'm going to stop the antenna and I'm going to detune it by putting this metal briefcase right next to it. Now I start it again. You hear it's reading the tag. And as I go away, you notice I'm getting much less range. And that's because of the detuning effect that the metal had on the antenna. Now I can retune re the antenna and get some of that range back. So let me do that. I'm going to stop the antenna. I'm going to tune it. And now when I restart the antenna, it's been tuned for this environment. And I'm getting about half maybe of that range back. You saw that I was only getting about six or seven feet versus the original 12. I'm about midway in between now. So now let's take a look at the Ruby rod and show that it, that it is much less susceptible to detuning than the Ranger antenna. So I'll go ahead and start up the rod antenna. And as I start that up, you hear the dinging sound of it reading this tag as I go out to our 12 feet of range as we saw before. Now I'm going to introduce the metal briefcase into the picture. And as I come out, you see that we do lose some range, but I'm still good out to about 9 feet without even having to retune the antenna. Much less loss of range than we saw with the Ranger antenna. And if I retune the antenna for the current environment, which I'm doing right now, and then restart it, 
I'll be back to my original 12 feet of range. As you hear there. So let's summarize what we saw here today. We looked at the performance of two different kinds of Ruby antennas, the Ranger antenna and one of our newer antenna designs, the Ruby rod. And one of the key differences that we saw is that the Ruby rod is much less susceptible to being detuned uh, by the presence of metal uh, in the environment. Ruby antennas and tags uh, can all be specifically tuned for metal environments. In fact, here I have an example of a ruby tag that's been designed to go directly onto the surface of steel I-beam. Uh, in this case, this, this tag actually gets better range on the steel uh, than off, and as you would expect from ruby, can be facing in any direction. The signals will go directly through the steel. So as a part of our engineering for different environments, uh, this is one of the things that we look at very closely. It's the right sort of antenna, both the type that's going to fit into the area uh, where you're needing to read from, uh, and also looking at things like the possibility of becoming detuned uh, from certain things in the environment. Thank you.